SpaceX test fired nearly all of the Raptor engines in Super Heavy Booster 7 on February 9, completing a significant milestone ahead of the orbital launch of the world's most powerful rocket. Loading of liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants into the tanks of Booster 7 began at 1.50 p.m. local time on Thursday. In roughly 80 minutes, the methane tank reached about 20% of its capacity, while the oxygen tank reached 100% of its capacity. At approximately 3.14 p.m. local time, Booster 7 ignited its engines for about 7 seconds, sending thick dark plumes of smoke across the launch complex. The booster remained anchored to the pad during the test, and the launch infrastructure appeared intact after the test. Shortly after the test, SpaceX tweeted that the test went for its full intended duration. The static fire test was designed to ignite all 33 Raptors in the booster. However, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted immediately after the test that controllers turned off one engine just before the ignition, and another stopped itself during the test. He added that even with two engines disabled, those that remained were still enough to send Starship into orbit. The 31 engines that fired together Thursday broke the record for the most engines ever ignited on a single rocket, exceeding the 30-engine Soviet N-1 moon rocket that flew on four failed missions from 1969 through 1972. If all 31 engines reached full throttle on Thursday's test, the rocket generated more than 71 meganewtons of thrust, nearly double the total thrust of NASA's Space Launch System rocket. In addition to successfully firing 31 Raptors simultaneously, the fact that Booster 7 and the orbital launch mount survived the test without failure, and that there were no visible damages to the orbital tank farm and ground support equipment, were also major achievements for SpaceX. While the 31 engines that ignited appeared to perform as expected, the fact that two engines failed to perform their jobs is certainly a problem to be considered. It is currently unclear whether SpaceX would try again to ignite all 33 engines on Booster 7 in a future test firing before attempting to launch the rocket into orbit. If the 31 engine test results are satisfactory, SpaceX will likely focus on the next steps on the list. Starship 24 will be transported to the launch site in the coming days, after final inspections at the build site are completed. After that, the ship will be stacked atop Booster 7 for the orbital launch. It should be noted that SpaceX still requires an FAA launch license before sending Starship around the world on its ambitious orbital flight. The FAA will issue the license only if it is confident that all pre-launch tests are successful and that all issues raised in the environmental review have been resolved. Prior to February 9 static fire, Elon Musk stated that SpaceX plans to launch Starship 24 into orbit in March and added that the mission success is far from certain, but excitement is guaranteed. Speaking at the FAA's annual Commercial Space Transportation Conference on February 8, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell stated that SpaceX could attempt the first orbital launch of Starship in March if the 33-engine test goes as planned. She added that there are numerous small jobs to complete, and SpaceX isn't really concentrating on the orbital ship because they know how to get to orbit. Instead, the company focuses on the production systems that will build the Starships. According to Shotwell, the real goal is to not blow up the launch pad during the orbital test flight. She mentioned that 100 orbital flights would be a great goal before putting humans on starships, but added it is not a requirement. A Starship Mars mission, according to the SpaceX president, would hopefully happen this decade or maybe early next decade. It appears that SpaceX is planning to build a water deluge system at Starbase before the orbital flight test. The deluge system will prevent rocket exhaust from damaging the vehicle or its surroundings during launch. The launch pad hardware will be protected from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during liftoff by the thousands of liters of water sprayed into the area directly below the rocket's engines. Deluge system hardware shipped from Florida last month arrived at Starbase on February 4. Installation of the water distribution manifold and pipes began the same afternoon near the orbital launch tower. The following day, four water hammer absorption tanks arrived at the launch site, and they were all installed on the pre-constructed platform near the launch tower. In this animation created by BL3D Eccentric, you can see how the tanks are connected to the distribution manifold. The purpose of these tanks is to protect the pipelines from a phenomenon called water hammer. A water hammer, or hydraulic shock, is a pressure surge or shockwave that occurs when a fluid in motion is abruptly forced to stop or change direction. This pressure wave can cause major issues like noise, vibration, pipe collapse, and even total system failure. In pressurized systems like the water deluge, the use of hydro-pneumatic tanks will provide very effective protection against water hammer damage. The tanks are designed for water storage and provide a pressurized air cushion to absorb or dampen the pressure surge. I have provided links to various sources that explain the working principle of surge tanks in the description. Don't forget to check out those links after watching this video.
SpaceX has already started the construction of a water deluge system near the Starship Launch Tower at Kennedy Space Center Pad 39A. The deluge system at Pad 39A is designed to pump water on the floor beneath the orbital launch mount. SpaceX may install a similar deluge system at Starbase or a system that pumps water from the top of the launch mount into the rocket exhaust. The exact working principle of the deluge system at Starbase will become clear as teams begin installing hardware around the launch mount in the coming days. Remember to keep an eye on the LabPadre live streams to stay updated with what's happening at Starbase. Starship 25, which has been sitting atop suborbital launch pad B for the past few weeks, is now being readied for the static fire test campaign. The tarp cover wrapped around pad B was recently removed, indicating that SpaceX is ready to fire the engines of Ship 25. Road closure notice indicates that rocket testing at Starbase will resume on Monday, February 13, most probably for the Ship 25 static fire test. Parts of the rocket catching and stacking arm for the second Starship integration tower at Kennedy Space Center were recently spotted at SpaceX's Roberts Road facility. The sections for the tower are also under construction at Roberts Road. However, the exact location of the tower is still a mystery. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket carrying the Amazonas Nexus communications satellite for the Spanish company Hispasat on Monday, February 6. Just over eight minutes after liftoff, the rocket's first stage landed on a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, successfully completing its sixth mission and marking the 170th booster landing. The satellite separated from the rocket's upper stage about 36 minutes after launch and started its ascent to a geostationary orbit about 36,000 kilometers over the equator. Built by Europe's Thales Alenia Space, Amazonas Nexus is designed to provide high-quality internet access to aviation, maritime, and rural customers. The 4,500-kilogram satellite, designed to operate for at least 15 years, will cover the entire American continent, Greenland, and the North and South Atlantic corridors. The February 6 mission also carried the Pathfinder 2 payload for the U.S. Space Force. The satellite will improve the U.S. Space Force's satellite communication architecture and provide increased capability to the warfighter. The next SpaceX mission, which will carry 56 Starlink satellites into orbit, is expected to lift off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on February 12. The Russian Soyuz rocket, carrying a Progress resupply ship to the International Space Station, blasted off from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on February 9. The mission, dubbed Progress MS-22, carried more than 2,500 kilograms of cargo, fuel, water, and air to the space station. Nearly 8 minutes and 50 seconds after launch, the spacecraft separated from the rocket's upper stage and began its two-day voyage to the ISS. The spacecraft is scheduled to dock with the orbiting laboratory on February 11, and it might have happened by the time you watch this video. Meanwhile, the Progress MS-20 vehicle, filled with trash and other waste, undocked from the station on February 7 and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere upon re-entry. The departure of the MS-20 spacecraft cleared the aft docking port on the Zvezda module for the Progress MS-22 vehicle. The MS-22 capsule is expected to remain at the ISS until August 2023. The next Russian mission to the ISS, dubbed Soyuz MS-23, is scheduled to launch on February 20. That uncrewed Soyuz mission is designated to replace the damaged Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft, currently docked at the space station. The MS-22 spacecraft that ferried U.S. astronaut Frank Rubio and cosmonauts Sergei Prokopyev and Dmitry Pedal into the station encountered a coolant leak following a micro-meteoroid strike on December 14. As the capsule is currently unfit to carry astronauts back to Earth, the MS-23 spacecraft which will launch on February 20 will be used to bring the crew back home. The Indian Space Research Organization successfully carried out the second demonstration mission of the agency's small satellite launch vehicle. The 34-meter tall and 2-meter diameter SSLV rocket took off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center for its second development flight on February 10. The rocket carried Earth Observation Satellite 7, an imaging, observation, and reconnaissance satellite built and operated by ISRO. Janus-1, a private satellite belonging to US-based satellite software developer Antares and Asadhisat, a satellite built by Indian students. Around 15 minutes after liftoff, the three-stage rocket successfully placed all three satellites into a 450 km circular orbit. The satellite insertion into the intended orbit is achieved through a liquid propulsion-based velocity trimming module. ISRO developed the small satellite launch vehicle to provide cheaper and more flexible access to space, compared to its launch vehicles currently operational. 
SSLV can place up to 500 kg of payload into a 500 km low Earth orbit. According to ISRO, the rocket has a quick turnaround time, the ability to accommodate multiple satellites, and launch on demand feasibility with minimal launch infrastructure requirements. SSLV lifted off for the first time on 6 August last year, carrying the EOS 2 Earth observation satellite and the student built OSAD HESAT UBSAT. Everything went well at first, but instead of delivering the two satellites to their intended 356 km circular orbit, the rocket ejected the payloads into a highly elliptical path that took them within just 76 km of Earth at the closest point. Both spacecraft burned upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. A recently released failure analysis summary revealed a short-term vibration disturbance on the equipment bay deck during the second stage separation. That higher-than-expected vibration briefly saturated all six accelerometers in the rocket's navigation system, triggering salvage mission mode, in which the rocket attempts to deploy payloads into a stable orbit despite a detected anomaly. However, when the satellite deployment took place, the rocket was traveling slower than the required velocity, resulting in the failure of the mission. The investigation also highlighted a number of measures that ISRO has taken to prevent such problems in the future. For example, the agency has swapped out the second stage separation system, installing one that's proven to be generating lesser vibration. The success of Friday's mission indicates that all the corrective measures taken were effective. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.